Hello and welcome to The Psych Files. Michael Britt here and this is episode 45. And this topic is basic research design. Yes, we're going to talk about uh, some basic research models used by all scientists, but of course by psychologists. I want to introduce you to a couple of basic designs and um, do so with a very interesting website I just happened upon. And I thought, oh, this is kind of a fun site. And I really have nothing to do with the site. And so here it is. It's called Hair Mixer. You get a couple of random celebrity photos. And so what you can do is you just press a button and it will mix the faces together. And they've got a whole library of faces in here. I thought, oh, you know, this would be sort of a fun way to talk about research. So I did a little mixing of faces, and that was kind of fun. But you can also do this. You can upload your own photo, sort of make fun of yourself. So I'm just going to upload a picture of myself. I click Submit, and there's the picture of me, the one that is on the website. And you can just change these little boxes right here. Now, instead of uh, mixing myself with Oprah, I, uh, just, I found a, an interesting uh, picture of someone that I thought, oh, this would be kind of fun. So I wondered to myself, well, first of all, I wondered what I would look like with a little bit of hair. And then I saw this picture of Anderson Cooper from CNN. And I thought, now there's a guy, nice head of gray hair. So I just decided to mix the two and to see what would happen. And luckily, because sometimes this works well and sometimes it doesn't work so good. But as you can see in this one, this worked out pretty good. There I am with some, uh, you know, that's a head, you know, gray hair there. That's not bad. Looks very distinguished. How does this relate to research design? What is it about gray hair? Think about the news. There's a certain credibility that we give to people with gray hair. Well, why not use that in a research design? So let's just go right here. Here we are. This is our basic experiment. I'm going to compare this picture of me here. There you go. That's going to be my one group. I'm going to get subjects, and they're going to look at a picture of me looking like this. And then a picture of me looking in another group, that is, I'm going to get a picture of me looking like that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate, in this case, my what's called the independent variable. Okay, that's the thing that we manipulate. In this case, I'm going to call it hair type. All right, so I'll get myself a whole bunch of subjects, and I'm going to uh, have them sit down and take a look at this picture. And then what I'll do is I'll also make up a, a paragraph of text. Let's say it's a statement on the dangers of global warming. Could really be anything, but that'll do. And then uh, what am I going to measure? Well, what effect do I think that the, the gray hair will have on my subjects? Well, I think the effect is that it will make them think that I know what I'm talking about, right? So I'm going to measure something. I'll call that credibility. I think that the gray hair gives me credibility. So that's my dependent variable. Now, credibility is the concept. How exactly are you going to measure that? In other words, what is your operational definition of credibility? And so this, these could be established scales. I could, I could uh, observe people's behavior. But in this case, a very again, a very doable study, I'm going to ask people to rate the credibility of uh, this person uh, after reading this statement and looking at this picture on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being very credible. All right, so I've got 30 subjects in this condition, 30 in that condition, and this is a also called a between-groups design. All right, I'm going to be calculating a mean based upon their answers to this scale. So, uh, what I'll do is I'll give some hypothetical results here. Uh, since I'm predicting that uh, there would be a higher mean score for the me with the gray hair, I'll give myself, uh, let's say, something like a uh, 8.2 you know, there. And me, ordinary looking me without the gray hair, a 6.3. All right. Now, by the way, there, there is a confound in this study already, and uh, I'll wait till the end to tell you what it is. In general, the study's pretty good, okay, but um, there's a problem, so I'll let you know in just a minute. 
Okay, so independent variable, hair type, dependent variable, credibility, there's my results. How do I measure it? I've got to measure it with a statistic called a t-test. Okay, a between groups t-test. All right, so I will show you the hypothetical results to this, and there they are. This is a, what it might be look like, assuming the results came out as I just described. You've got the uh, taller histogram here. Well, the whole thing is a histogram. The taller bar on the right is me with the gray hair. And on the left, you can see that on the, the left, the, the no gray hair, the bar is a little lower. So we usually, when we graph results from experiments like this, the independent variable is along the bottom, like that. In this case, hair, hair type, really, or presence or absence of gray hair. A number of ways to word it. And the dependent variable is along the left. All right? And so it's pretty straightforward. Is it a significant difference? Then we would, what we would have to do to determine that would be to analyze the data, actually analyze the data using the t-test. Okay? So that is really all there is to the basic between-groups design. You would need two conditions. One of these you could call the me on the left, the control condition if you wanted to, and the me on the right, the experimental. All right? Okay, there's another, there's one way, one, one other little twist on this before I tell you what the confound is here. And that is that if you can't get 60 subjects, there's another way to do this study. Suppose you can only get 30 subjects. Okay, uh, you just, you don't have 60 people you can get a hold of. Well, if that's the case, then what you could do is use those 30 subjects twice. So instead of this being a between groups design, it's called a within subjects design. So in other words, the 30 people come on Monday and they look at this picture, they read the statement about global warming, they give me a credibility rating, and you say, thank you very much. You know, can you come back in whatever amount of time you think you know, would be good? I suppose if they come in the next day, if you ask them to do the exact same thing, they might say, well, this kind of looks like the guy I saw yesterday. You know, they, they might figure out what you're, what's going on here, you know, which you don't want them to do that. Also, if they read the paragraph twice, they would recognize what it is. So you spread this out a little bit, give people time to forget, or you give them other tasks to do, and this is in the middle of them, middle of that task, so that they don't really remember having done it that, that well. They certainly don't remember what number they gave on your scale of 1 to 10. Okay, and so if you did that, you save a little bit so that they come in once, they see this picture, give you a rating, come back two weeks later, see this picture, give you a rating, and now it's the same subjects. That has some advantages, as you can tell, uh, with the lower number of people that you need, and the statistics also give you an advantage there. All right, so that's the within subjects design. One more twist, again, before I wrap this up, and that is that you don't have to have just two conditions. You could, for example, go back to goodoldhairmixer.com and do what I did, which was to mix yourself with someone who looks quite a bit different from you. And so here I am with uh, some guy. You know, I don't know who this was. This was some celebrity, but he had a great head of hair, so I thought I'd have a little fun. And so there I am with this uh, wild hairdo here. And so now I've got three groups, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I would probably do this as a between groups design if I had a choice. And um, now the problem, of course, is then I'd need 30 subjects over here and 30 here and 30 over here. So I'm, you know, this is it's getting a little bit harder the more subjects you add. Not a, you know, it's if you went down to 20 subjects, you'd probably be okay. Depends upon what you're doing this for, but if it's certainly if it's just for the a project in class, 20 subjects would be fine. I wouldn't go too much below that. But you might, uh, I might predict in this case that um, I'm still going to give Mr. Gray Hair the highest credibility. But a guy with this much hair, I don't know. You know, I might think that that guy, he's too, I don't know, he's too swarmy looking or something. So I think my subjects are going to give him a lower rating. And I think I'm going to keep my 6.3 rating next to uh, 
Mr. Regular Looking Me here. And so this is a um, three-group design, okay, three-group between subjects design. And uh, what I would have to do, though, is I can't use the t-test anymore. Got to use the old ANOVA. Right? It's a different statistical test, but that's what you'd have to use in this case. And that's why you have to learn statistics along with research methods, so you know what you're doing when you analyze the results. Okay, so that's it. Those are some of the main terms and ways of doing a, a basic research. This, I've done it with pictures. This could just as easily be medications, uh, medications for depression, uh, medications to lower cholesterol. It's the same research approach each time. Okay, but here's the problem with this study. And um, hopefully you've seen this. Maybe you've seen what's going on here. Remember that in a, a research study, you want to manipulate, that is, change or have different, only one thing between the conditions. Just one thing. And you'd ideally like everything else to be the same. Now, while it's great that these uh, three pictures all have the same me, the same center of my face, same facial expression. And while it's true that I have gray hair here and brown hair here and almost no hair there, the other problem, though, is that we are all dressed differently. The confound here is that if this me here on the right gets the highest credibility rating, maybe that is due to the fact that I appear to be wearing something of a formal outfit here. Okay, whereas over to the far left, I'm dressed uh, somewhat casually. So maybe the more formal dress is what caused people to give this picture higher credibility ratings. Maybe it had nothing to do with the hair. And this guy in the middle, uh, obviously he's very casually dressed. And the other problem is that look at all this stuff that's going on around him. There's even a person in the background here. And then there's something that says extra, which I believe is a TV show. Maybe you watch that. Maybe you don't like this guy because you're distracted. Uh, so that's, a, that's an issue that might, we might call that noise because you don't know what effect that will have. You have a good sense that this formal dress is a problem. That's a confound. The rest of this is kind of noise. This is also a black and white photo on the far left. These are two color photos. This one's got a, sort of a strange line going through it here. The ideal way to do this actually might not be to use hair mixer, but of course, something like Photoshop. Right? That way you know exactly what is being manipulated. But if you're not a whiz at Photoshop, then you know, do something like hair mixer. Have a little fun with research. Learning it doesn't have to be dull. It can be interesting. It gets serious when you get into when uh, doing research on very, you know, very important kinds of studies, like those with medication, uh, psychological treatment, etc. This could just as easily be something like a, a comparison between uh, exposure therapy and uh, EMDR, right? Two different conditions, different subjects, different treatments, different dependent variable, but that's how it's done. Okay, there you go. That's this week's episode on research design, and thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoy these uh, occasional video episodes of The Psych Files, www.thepsychfiles.com. Take care.